Hello and welcome to Lights and Buttons. If you're watching this in January, Happy New Year. Today's topic is macro photography and if you're just getting into photography, you just invested in your first camera or you're trying to get into macros without buying a dedicated lens which can be $500 to $1,000, you just want to start off with something simple and particularly cheap. Uh, one thing you can do is get an extension tube. Now there are other ways of doing this which I'll cover later on in the video but here we're just going to talk about extension tubes and how you can use them with your existing lenses. So you're probably wondering, how do I choose the correct extension tube? First off, you want to make sure that the type of mount matches up. So in this case, since I'm using the Sony system, I'm using the Sony E-mount, and this is the corresponding matching E-mount for the extension tube. If you're using Nikon or Canon, and for example, this is the uh, Nikon version, um, you just have to buy the mount that matches because those are physically different for each type of mount. So this thing sits between the camera body and the lens and it physically pushes the lens forward so you can get closer up shots. And the electrical context will allow the camera to read the lens data such as the aperture, the focal length, stuff like that. And also, the in terms of the aperture, it does electronic aperture control which a lot of the modern lenses do. So if you look at the older lenses, they have the dedicated aperture rings but the newer ones do not. So in order to control the aperture, you have to do it electronically from the body and it has to relay through these electrical contacts. In order to use the extension tube, what you do is you mount this to the camera body and then you mount the lens to the extension tube. So the extension tube physically pushes the lens out away from the camera body, allowing you to take those close-up shots. Now these extension tubes can vary in length. There's a, for this, it comes with two pieces and you can actually split them up and then as you can see, you know, they each have their own sections and you can mount these individually or you can use both of them at the same time. I'll be doing this test with two prime lenses as well as a single zoom lens. We'll start with the Sigma 85mm 1.4, then the Sigma 24mm 1.4 lens, and then we'll end with the Sony 24-105 f4. Okay, we got the 85mm 1.4. I'll flip this to manual focus changes to the closest focusing distance and I'll dial this down to f2.8 so shooting at ISO 400 1 250th of a second let's just see how close we can get with this alright not bad not bad as you can see um, definitely not like a super macro but um, you can get a pretty close up, especially for the 85. So let's go ahead and take this out, turn the camera off. Let's put in the 10 mil. So there's a 10 millimeter and then there's a 16 millimeter section. I'm going to put the smaller portion in first. Just move the. And. Whenever you do macro, I, I recommend that you do manual focus. This claims that you can do autofocus is not really good. I'll, I'll show you an example. Um, let me see, flip this back to auto. Uh, try to focus. Yeah. It's a little bit slower. Sometimes I see it hunt. Right, you're going back and forth between the front and back. Not that bad in this case, but in some cases I've seen worse. So let's flip it back to manual and closest focusing distance. Pretty good. You know what? I'm going to focus on the headlight, but keep the whole car centered. Pretty good. So it's a tighter shot. You get the whole car. Um, let's, let's try a little bit more. Let's turn the camera off. Okay, there you go. And then these pictures will actually get a little bit darker as we go closer and closer because whenever you add an extension tube, there'll be some sort of light loss. Put that on the lens. And there we go. There we go. Pretty nice. So it's not super, super close, but you can get significantly closer compared to without the extension tube. Alright, 
a shot of 24, 1.4. As I was changing the lens before, I was kind of cringing a little bit because I like to face the camera down, but I was showing you the extension tube, so we'll make an exception there. I'm going to get rid of the extension tube, or the uh, hood rather. And let's see if we have this manual, closest uh, focusing distance. All right. And. Alright, not bad. So that's just the 24 mil. Let's add the extension tubes. Let's try both of them this time. This is probably going to get pretty close. Alright, manual focus. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, wow. You know what? I actually, this thing is focusing so close that it's looking at the lens, the dust that's on the UV filter. I'm going to record a clip. Kind of hard to see, but as I'm moving over the car, you can see the little dust and whatever is in the air that's in front of the lens. That's crazy. I mean, I don't think at this point I can really get this in focus. I'm, I'm just, you can see right here, I'm just right up against the car and I can't get it in focus <laughs> this is too much so we'll have to cut back on the extension tube so let's turn this off okay we just have the 10 millimeter extension tube and let's see what we can get oh, okay Wow, as you can see, this, this is almost touching. So what happens if we jump from 10 to the 16 mil? Closest focusing distance. Oh, it's going to be close. Part of the headlight, I guess, is in focus. I mean, I can stop it down more. This is not to demonstrate how much you can get in focus is just to demonstrate how close you can get with certain lens setups and this extension tube but as you can see that's pretty close the 24s if you focus all the way to the closest distance and you bring it right up your subject can be almost touching the lens and you can get a shot and at that point even though I have soft boxes around the shadow of the lens is interfering with the lighting of the subject and you might run into problems without you know an external flash and things might get complicated so I think in this case probably the 85 might be a little bit better um, let's try the 24 to 105 zoom lens that'll give us a variety of focal lengths but I'm wondering how the lens will behave as the as you change focal lengths and the lens uh, the lens elements move around okay now we have the 24 to 105 Sony lens get rid of these And what I'll do, I'll actually bump up the ISO just a little bit. Uh, go from 400 to 800. And 24 millimeters, yep, similar, similar to the Sigma 24. You can see the dust on the UV filter that I have on here. Uh, manual focus, um, let's see. If I zoom in a little bit, let's say 50. Let's try 50 millimeters. Let's see if I can get this to show up. Yeah, not bad. Pretty close. Um, if I zoom up to past 85 to 105, and still pretty decent. I'm at this point. I'm just moving, and if you breathe a little bit, you're out of focus the wheels right there I mean at 105 I guess f4 helps a little bit right stopping down the lens as long as you have enough light you can get pretty detailed shots and this is just using a 24 to 105 f4 lens which is regarded as a general zoom lens not really dedicated for macro but before I wrap up this video I like to go through the other types of macro setups besides the extension tubes Starting from the top, if you're using an official macro lens, 
you have a dedicated lens that is pretty much best for macros. However, for less costly options, you have the option of using an extension tube as I went over in this video. Next up, you also have a lens coupler, which I've used before. This is a little bit more cumbersome because you will require two lenses, one reversed, to do macro photography. And in both cases where if you're using a lens coupler or the next one down, a reverse lens adapter, you'll need a lens with a physical aperture ring. And finally, I have listed a macro filter. I've never tried one before, but I've heard that the quality can vary. And a lot of times they can be on a low side with this. So just watch out for that. That's all for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I shot the only Lamborghini I can afford and uh, had lots of fun. And I can't wait to see some real world photos going outside of this studio and taking actual pictures of whatever kind of comes along the way um, with the extension tubes here. I'm not sponsored. You know, I bought this with my own money just to play around with. I figured something cheap that I can um, do some macro photos with without investing in an actual lens. Um, so it's pretty nice so far no major problems with it other than needing to manually focus But that's kind of expected Don't forget to like share and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video